We're back and we're making beef bourguignon. For this, we're going to begin with a half pound of bacon and we're going to blanch it. What does that boil mean? It. We're going to boil it. Blech. <laughs> and the reason we boil it is to get rid of that smoky taste. Now, if you were a real hardcore chef, you would probably just get lardoons, but we are poor graduate students. We got bacon. Bacon on sale. <laughs> the best kind of the bacon. The best kind of bacon. Sale bacon. Sale. So we are going to put this bacon in the boiling water when it boils. And then we're going to chop it into little pieces. And that's going to form our pork base of the beef bourguignon. Now why don't we want the smoky flavor? We just don't. <laughs> and we're back. So we're going to dump this. It's a technical term. <laughs> into the hot water without burning ourselves. Always Again. a good idea. <laughs> that was another episode. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to let that come back to the boil. Is the bacon going to change color, or are we just looking for it to come back to the boil? A little bit of both. By the time it comes back to the boil, the bacon should um, be whiter. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see, it has started to boil. It's starting to render out some of that stuff. In my world, we call that... Mmm, fat. You'll have ample opportunity for the pork fat. For now, let's get rid of most of that. Rinse this out to shock it. Stopping the cooking process in its tracks. And making it easier to handle. And now we're going to take these strips. Choppy choppy. And chop them into little pieces. I think that would shock the bacon more than the water. skills. So we now have a nice pile of bacon of what is a reasonable approximation to lardoons. If you're feeling fancy you could just get lardoons? Yes. If you're broke, just get bacon. On sale bacon. <laughs> The best kind of bacon. <laughs> the best kind of bacon. All right. Now we can move on to the star attraction. Boof. The beef part of beef bourguignon. So I'm going to put there. It is some bacon fat. From this jar of bacon fat from I prepared jar, earlier. From a jar of bacon fat that we have been collecting. You can see there's some that. really good layers there. Some Don't good layers. Don't throw that happening. away. Don't throw that away. What you really want is probably at most a tablespoon because it's bacon fat. If I can give one bit of cooking advice, it's always keep your bacon fat. Not only does it taste delicious, but then it doesn't go down your drain and stop it up and make Yannick mad. <laughs> Means I don't have to snake drains. In addition to making dinner. So put that in our Dutch oven. And put the heat on medium high. While that is 
getting sexy. While that is melting, we're going to coat the beef in uh, flour. Now what kind of beef is this? This is stewing beef. Otherwise known as the cheap beef. That's right, cause cheap beef is what? The most delicious? The best kind of beef. Well, on sale beef is the most On delicious. sale beef is the best kind of beef. So we're just going to take handfuls of this, turn it around, and coat that beef in Frower. flour. Coating it in flour accomplishes two goals. One being it dries out the beef a little bit so you can get that nice brown crust on the outside, mm, which is what we're getting at this preliminary stage. The other thing it does is promote the Maillard reaction. Well, Mr. Science, tell us about the Maillard reaction. In a nutshell, the Maillard reaction gives us delicious flavor molecules because the protein that unravels combines with starch and under the correct temperature conditions, namely high temperature, you end up with this reaction, this Maillard reaction. And the result of that Maillard reaction, that combination of um, unraveled protein and starch, is incredibly flavorful, and we interpret that as incredibly tasty. Umami. Not quite. Oh, but it's yummy. It is very delicious, but it's not. It's not umami. Fail. Now that this has been nicely coated. Oh man, I can totally smell that bacon fat. Woo. Now that this has been nicely coated in flour, I'm going to salt it a little bit. To Which fur further promotes the Maillard reaction, does it not? It does. So I'm going to add a little pinch Oop. of salt. Your pinches are musical. And we're going to put this in just a couple at a time. We don't want to overcrowd the pan because ultimately that beef is still cold. And if you put too much of it at the same time, we're going to cool down that pan. So, one, two, three, four, five, uh, uh, uh. six, uh, uh, uh. seven, and I don't know that I can put another one in, only if it was really small. So there's room between. Basically. So we, you don't want them touching. You want, yeah, you want them to be fairly spaced out. So we're going to basically cook them on all sides until they're nice and brown on all sides. And then remove these ones and put the other ones back in. Okay. So. Okay. We'll let you do that. In the meantime, beer break. All right. We are back. And this meat is fairly brown. So I'm gonna take it off. You can see, that's what we're looking for all around. What I'm going to do now, while this sort of hardens, I'm going to lower this temperature to about medium, mm -hmm. down from medium high. And I'm going to add a little bit, probably only a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. And we're going to let that heat up. And meanwhile... See, you've gotten out the food processor. I've taken out the food processor and I'm going to slice these mushrooms and these cloves of garlic, or at least three of these cloves and two of them are going to go in there. So three cloves of garlic. There. 
It's te- I like that technique. Just smack them. Anger man- management technique. Just smack them. Get rid of the skin. We're going to feed them and these through the food processor. Just to chop them up in a little bitty bits? Just to chop them into slices. You're going to slice them in the food processor. Slice everything in the food processor. Really? The shallots, once this heats up, I'm going to saute. And then once they're semi-transparent, I'll um, put the red onion through the food processor and the beef. So The beef goes in the food processor? No, no, no. The beef goes in the pot. Ah. The sliced red onion and shallot go in the pie. Gotcha. So, just you, and you, and Sorry. you, and you. It's a party. And on. Look at that fanciness. And that, and this. Let's see that again. Yeah. And in a matter of minute of seconds, moments, you didn't have to worry about cutting yourself, cutting or... yourself, or doing anything stupid. Well, there's still time. There's still time. I know. So I'm going to take this. I've preheated the oven to 350, and I'm going to put this into a oven-safe dish. This has the mushroom and the garlic. This is going to roast while that simmers. That mm. oil's getting a little smoky there, dear. Well, that's... I'll turn it down then. So, we've got this. Oops. Gong show! We've got this. That. And to flavor this, just a little bit more. A little olive oil on there. Ooh. A little bit of balsamic vinegar. I see. What that's going to do is caramelize. So you're not going to put any fat on those mushrooms to get them to get a little bit of well, I am. fattiness? I am. That goes without saying. So I'm going to put, <laughs> I don't know, like a tablespoon of olive oil in that. Cool. And then stick this in the oven. It's a, nice, it's a nice apron you're wearing. Thank you. And move on to the shallots. Why shallots instead of onions? Just for a different flavor. You could do pearl onions, but they're expensive. <laughs> Again, they were on sale. <laughs> Well, they weren't particularly on sale, but they were a lot cheaper than pearl onions. So I'm just going to... You know, actually, I think we have pickled pearl onions. Could you use those? Um, kind of a nasty vinegar, flavor. The vi- no, no. The vinegar is going to interact with the other flavors. Gotcha. Actually, let me prepare these. So we top and tail... The shallots. Our onion family. Top. Tail. And you don't cut all the way through. We'll see why in a second. Snap these out. Little shallot babies. We are chopping these into something of a fine mince. Are you going to chop them or use the food, use the food processor? These I'm going to chop. Any particular reason why? To get them finer. Also, you don't want to lose the juice and you're a lot more likely to lose the juice. Which is m- where most of the flavor in all of the onion family. The onion, the garlic, all of that flavor is in the juice. So you don't really want to lose that. Mmm, onion juice. So I'm 
just pull this back. So, I'm going to make one incision. Oh my god, so dangerous. Not really. One incision here. Move down. And make out little lines into the shallot. And now, Now you have an entire shallot minced. And no fingers minced in there either. And no finger. The best way to avoid getting cut is to use a very sharp knife. Mm -hmm. And to use what's known as a choke hold. Like you're choking. What, show that again? Sorry, I didn't get that camera. No, choke hold. Like you're choking the knife. Also, you want to make sure that your fingers aren't somewhere out here. <laughs> like under the blade. Like under the blade. But having the choke hold in and of itself is going to help you control. control because that way you know exactly where the blade is. So it might take some getting used to, but once you've gotten used to it and it's sharp, then you very rarely will cut yourself. Rarely. I won't say anything about that. <laughs> Alright, we'll pause for a second. So, we've minced up some shallots. Do you have all ten fingers? I have all ten fingers. All ten toes. As far as we can tell. As far as I can tell. We are now going to make a paste out of this. So, Gotta save the cassia. No, it's because it'll be easier to smack. If you place these on your cutting board and this against the edge and whack it, Wha bam! And you can get rid of all of the numbering and stuff. You've got all of that delicious juice still there. Garlic juices. And it makes it very easy. to mince. Well, bam. It's already mostly pulverized. So, let's add this. Turn down that heat. Add that. Add that. And add... Ooh, garlicky. Whew. That. Getting a little emotional. I just love shallots so much. And the last thing we're going to do. <laughs> Ignored. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's because I want to get through this. So the last thing we want to do is slice. Whoa. <laughs> Except we need the slicer. We need the slicer. And we're going to use the slicing attachment. Slice that red onion nice and thin. So all I've done is quarter the red onion and I'm using only about half. So that's only half a red onion that's been top tailed, peeled. And about how many shallots did you use? Four. So we don't want this to be overly garlicky and oniony, but we do want it to have flavor. So, that's close to saute. Done. God bless the food processor. Seriously. So now you've got these nice, very thin ribbons of red onion. You're going to add wonderful Beautiful, one might say. Beautiful and wonderful texture, taste, and color to our beef bourguignon. I'm all tangled up in my cord. Just a second. I'm sorry. Bye. Look at that. It's nice looking.
and purple. So we're just going to let this sweat out a little bit. Whew. So while these sweat and become semi-translucent, This is going to simmer in what is basically a red wine and deep broth sauce. Ooh. So, we've got really, really bad red wine. Foul, one might say. Foul. And the Pope stopped by, so it seems. <laughs> and this is, no, this is a, a raspberry liqueur, which is just going to add some of that sweetness. Whoa. Fancy. And we're going to add a little bit of Canadian rye. Because why the hell not? To add a little bit of potency. So we have probably about a cup of liquid. Ooh, sorry, too close. <laughs> too close. We have probably about a cup of liquid, would you say? Sure, why not? Plus our cup. Why not? Yeah. It's about a cup. And we probably want to I'm add... I'm going to smell it. Well, it smells like bad red wine and raspberry liqueur. <laughs> we probably want to add another two cups of beef broth. So. And you've been boiling the bones of, you know, the rump roast we made last, no, Christ last no. night. <laughs> we have very little time on our hands. We're very busy people. We're just going to dissolve into two cups of warm water. Uh, three teaspoons or one tablespoon of... Is that how many teaspoons in a tablespoon? Correct. I never, I never knew. Three teaspoons or one tablespoon of broth. You could also use a bouillon cube, I guess, if you had it. That's right. Just follow the directions and get some sort of beef broth. A beef broth. That's yeah, perfect. Maybe a little bit more. Mix that up a little bit. If we take a look at this, you'll see that is mostly sort of semi-transparent. It's not quite transparent. Mm, kind of shiny. But a little bit shiny. That's that's what we want it at. All right. We then add this. Chunks of beef. I'm doing this the stupid way. Add this, the chunks of beef. Add this. Cup of awesome. And add this. Cup of beef. Cup of beef broth. At this point, you could season it. Probably add. A teaspoon of pepper, something like that. Well, uh, this is probably closer to a tablespoon. No We've way. got a lot. Don't believe. I say, I say teaspoon. Basically salt and pepper to taste, okay. right? So we're adding that, we're adding that, we're adding maybe a pinch of salt, even though there's already quite a bit of salt. So yeah, we're not adding, we're not adding a lot of salt. What about our bacon, Yannick? We're going to add the bacon after that has begun to simmer. Ah. So we're going to add the bacon. When we add the mushrooms, and that'll be in another half hour. Awesome. So in the meantime, should we check on our bread? It's bread time. Saucy. Boy. A pretty. All right, so 
It's been about a half an hour. Okay. So we are going to transfer the boiling goodness. First, without burning myself. <laughs> really good idea. We are going to transfer these mushrooms, which have nicely roasted and taken on all of that flavor. Oh. We're going to transfer this. Hot, burning, things hot, no touchy. <laughs> What have we learned? I totally burned myself. <laughs> totally. Only a little. Touched something hot and then I reacted to it. So we're going to put this in. Blanched bacon. Our blanched bacon. Now he puts two gloves on. Well, I didn't need two gloves before. Obviously, you did. Not until now. And finally. Going to add a little bit of thickener just to get this nice and sexy. Really sexy. So, so what are we going to use to thicken it with, Yannick? Oh, focus. There we go. Our good old friend, cornstarch. So, are we going to make a slurry? We are indeed. A slurry is a way of incorporating this into that in such a way that we're not going to end up with lumpy gravy. Mm -hmm. So we are going to take a nice saucepan. Going to use a saucepan? Wow! I've only ever done it just in a bowl with warm water. <laughs> Burn! I'm gonna add a little bit. Maybe a tablespoon. Okay. Or a tablespoon and a half. Add a little bit of butter. Butter. Because the only thing you want to add to beef bourguignon. Is At this point, butter. there is surprisingly little fat in our beef bourguignon. This is true. There was about a tablespoon of bacon fat. The fat that's on the bacon itself. The meat was fairly lean. So I put in about a table, well, less than a tablespoon of butter. And as that butter melts, we are going to add some water. Should that water be warm? It should be hot. Not boiling, but definitely hot. I'm going to put this in. We want the water to be unpleasant. And even if we have two cups, we're not going to use all two cups. And it's kind of like making a room, but not really. We're going to slowly incorporate some water into this until we have a slurry. It's going to be sludgy. Right now it's mostly just gluey. 
They're really looking for a sludge. Do you want to keep it on the heat as you're doing that, then? Oh, we can turn the heat off now. And slowly incorporate some water. So let's look at your slurry. A little lumpy still. A little bit. I never claimed to be the Iron Chef. Only, Only. the Zinc Saucier. A lesser title that you just made. Also. It comes with double prize money. So, this is good enough. And I probably added about a cup of water. So now, Whoa. we're going to incorporate this into our beef bourguignon. Give it a stir. Give it a stir to really, what happened to mine? What are you looking for? Use your words. Your other mitten. That thing's hot. Really incorporate this. To help thicken it. Easy. And we're gonna do the old switch switch a root. A little bread for for burgundy. How hot is this? Oh, it's not hot anymore. So <coughs> I take this out, it should sound hollow. It sounds hollow. So let's... Oh, we gotta make room for it to cool, I guess. Well, we'll do that after. Yeah. Do it after. We'll do that in a minute. So, that. turning this off. Dutch oven. Put the Dutch oven. And we must be aware that this is actually a Dutch oven. It does not have a plastic cover on it. It is meant to go in the it's oven. It's meant to go in the oven. Okay. And it's going to go straight from here to our 350 oven for another half hour. So that's another half hour. Yeah. Beef bourguignon has been in here. For like almost an hour, I guess. For no? roughly an hour, yeah. You can see how... Mmm, that smells bomb diggity good. Everything has been absorbed. We have nice thick sauce. Succulent meat. And now we will serve the beef bourguignon. Which, is which looks smoking good. Delicious. Are you just gonna serve that on the side there? Just serve that. Here. You can dip your bread in it. Kind of like a stew almost. It's like French, it is. It's like it French, is a French stew. stew. 